Yeah, cognitive IOLs is a very tricky topic because it depends not only on the lens, depends on the eye, depends on how the lens is played on the on the sulcus or in the capsular back. It depends on, on how the, the interaction of the lens makes with the capsular back forces to be usable for the purpose of accommodation and also depends on how these forces relate to the ciliary body and the lens uh, when it is placed on the sulcus. So it, there are a lot of variables involved and to restore a complex uh, physiological mechanism like accommodation is really tricky. It's difficult. It's not to restore the, the, the movement of the leg, of the leg or, uh, and, and the hip. It's really to restore a neurological function that depends on many variables, involves a function of a ciliary body, which is still is not completely understood in terms of the behavior, and depends also in, on factors that are influenced by age. So these are all the variables involved. But having said that, it is possible to have an accommodative values at, at this moment. The challenges to develop an accommodative IOL are uh, quite uh, remarkable, but the main one at this very moment is to decide whether the lens should be placed at the sulcus or in the casual bag. In the casual bag, we have demonstrated in a monkey model that has been published in one paper in Neural Refractive Story now two years ago that, uh, that any uh, device uh, which is implanted in the casual bag becomes blocked because of the casual bag fibrosis. It's not only about the epithelial proliferation that some investigators have claimed to be reduced by, expand, by the expansion of the casual Back, but the casual back really is a basal membrane that without any anatomical reason to exist becomes fibrotic like any dead tissue. And this is the problem, this uh, dead tissue becomes fibrotic and any lens that depends on the movement and elasticity of the casual back related to the, to the sonar fibers is condemned to be uh, not functioning after probably six months or, uh, or about because this was the fact that we would demonstrated in our study. Based on this finding, we uh, move out from the casual back completely and since 10 years ago we are uh, working in lenses implanted at the sulcus. The sulcus is an anatomical location that is not well understood by most of the surgeons, including myself at that very moment, but it's has a place in where, where forces are appear <coughs> uh, related to the ciliary body. The ciliary body moves in, in different proportions, backwards and, and centrally, when accommodation happens. And this, all these forces can be gathered by an adequate located haptic, transmitting these forces, which are obviously small, to an adequate design and ocular lens that in this case is uh, creating a continuous change in power related to the ciliary body action. That means continuous change of power of the lens and of the eye related to the ciliary body uh, action means accommodation. So the challenge is in the sulcus and in the back. If it is in the back, the challenge is will not uh, work in the long term, consider long term more than six months, unless we discover something to get the elasticity of the casual back uh, active for life, something that I don't think that is feasible today because the casual back uh, empty is a dead tissue, and finally the, the sulcus is my choice, and I think that this is a place where a successfully uh, developed uh, accommodation will be available soon for the surgeons. Well, the new generation of accommodative IOLs have a lot of advantages. Number one, we learn from the past. We learn from the mistakes of the past. And there, there, there are a number of lenses that I don't want to mention now that fail to demonstrate their facts. They, they were claimed to be accommodative. We knew from the very beginning that we're not doing the job, but it, it took years for everybody to believe that this was true. Number one, why these mistakes, they, these mistakes were created by inadequate measurement of the distances. Uh, we need to have homologated a measurement for near and intermediate vision using the adequate metrics and the adequate distances and this homologated should be homologated by, by the, 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 the good practices of optometry. Second, we know that the casual bag is not a reliable place and this is something that comes because experimental studies and the huge evidence that we have for the clinical practice, all lenses that have been in the back, all of them have failed with no exception. And finally, we have experimental work that has been in part, partially in, in, in a good part developed by ourselves and is public at this moment because we publish it, that demonstrates that we have other ways to approach accommodation. Having said that, the next challenge is to demonstrate that this works over time, that this is resistant to casual back fibrosis and to resistant to uh, 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 opacification of the, of the posterior capsule, something that we have demonstrated as well because it's published. And we have at this moment two publications, one in the American Journal of Ophthalmology 
in January 2016. Another in this very month of October 2017, uh, online already in journal refractive survey, in which we have offered the evidence that this moment is available in a significant number of clinical cases implanted with a sulcus-based lens called the luminal lens, and uh, over time demonstrating that the laser capsulotomy is not, is not uh, an, a negative feature but improves the, the performance of these lenses, the time is not negatively influencing the behavior, and finally that they are safe because the follow-up that we have from the initial clinical study said years, even that the, 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 the study that we report in terms of the visual, near visual outcomes and refraction is with three years follow-up at this moment. If you are going to use accommodative IULs, my advice use the lenses in the sulcus. Then it's not difficult. You need just to, to collapse the capsule back the, by, by the use of cohesive viscoelastic just before the implantation, making the anterior capsule back to be completely uh, attached to the posterior capsule back. And then to inject the lens is like any other lens. You are injecting the, the distal haptic is going to be in the sulcus, while the trial haptic is going to be in the sulcus or not. And you have to check your capabilities to assess how is the capsule back, uh, the, the ruin of the anterior capsulotomy, to be exactly behind the lens to be sure that nothing is happening and this training involves you to make a good lab or to be in the first cases assisted by one experienced surgeon that which is the best way to learn how to introduce in your practice a new procedure but this is number one second i definitely encourage doctors to use homologated tests near vision tests have been a, with, a, with a diversity that makes very difficult to extrapolate results from one office to other to use a random test is the best way uh, in europe uh, to, to use <clears throat> this near vision measurement because basically it involves all the European languages uh, in, in terms of, of understanding. Near vision tests are not about letters, they are not about synthesis, they are about psychology and they have been properly, they have to be properly developed and this is what the runner tests are developed in Spanish, in English, in, in all the European languages and, the, and finally you need to know the safety tips that involve these this, uh, this, uh, lenses. <clears throat> you should expect no reaction from the sulcus, you should expect a little bit more reactivity uh, in terms of pigmentary dispersion in the early post op but this is unrelevant in terms of the future uh, behavior of the lens and of course of the eye and you need to know how to what is what to expect how to treat how to use the lens and finally how to understand the, the measurements and the and the way to, you you are going to study the patients finally I have to tell you that accommodation is a function that needs training this training is not the next day happy face of the patient is the neck the patient is happy after one month and especially after several months because training a function is a way to make this function to be better we're restoring the function we're not restoring optics and to restore a function needs training and the training is to encourage the patient to devote time to, to near vision and you would see how very fast these patients are using accommodation they, they know how to use the lens and unconsciously they become spectacularly independent The next step for us is a multicentrical uh, clinical trial in which we participate. So far I have been the only one surgeon involved in this investigation and this is good to focus precisely in the variables involved but finally demonstration is the way in which science is progressing and we are at, the, at this very month of, of October involving other centers. And so these multicentrical clinical trials using the same methodology, using the same surgery and obviously adequately monitor independently from the industry but uh, at, uh, related to good clinical practices is the next step to demonstrate that really we are dealing with a community lens that is useful in the long term for our patients. <laughs>